All right, it's 112 degrees. My gun is 106 years old. And uh, I have 30 rounds on clips for a 31 round count stage. So let's do this. That sounds like winning. Wow. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. Today I am out at a pistol only steel match called Steelworkers. Figured it'd be a lot of fun to come out here today and try actually shooting my 1907 Roth Steyr pistol. Uh, this was one of the standard uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire pistols during World War I. I think they're really cool. I think they handle very well. They have actually reasonably decent sights. And I have managed to scrounge up three stripper clips for mine, which are both very scarce and very expensive pieces. And it's really hard to work with the gun without them. So now that I have three, I can pretty much run a match like this. Preload 10 rounds. I got 30 more with me. I'm good. Uh, except for one stage, which you'll see. At any rate, um, these pistols are they're pretty beefy guns. They're, they're strongly built, they're durable. This one still works great. It's a 1910 proofed pistol, so it's 106 years old as of now. And the ammunition, by some miraculous coincidence, is still being made by Fiocchi. So you can actually buy the ammo for less than usurious prices. And uh, with Fiocchi and my gun, I have a combination that shoots almost exactly to point of aim, which makes it a real pleasure to shoot. Shooter ready, stand by. It's a good gun, I love it, but Ah. Wonderfully planned, poorly executed. Yep. Ah. That was good. Hoo yeah. Hoo yeah. I think I hit everything. Oh, uh, all right. All right, you shooter ready? Yep. Stand by. Come on. Last one in there. There you go. Every miss is a hand single load. Don't do it. That worked. Uh, 
Last stripper clip. Single load pain city. Don't do that. This trigger gets really heavy. It gets heavier when you only have one round. Yes! Hoo All right, clear. Yep. Stand by. Too low, I think. That precision paid off. No! Ah! This is a Christmas room in the moment. You know why they use stripper clips, right? It's so they don't have to manufacture multiple magazines that work, they only have to make one. doing oh away go down swinging <sighs> oops right. that could have been better going all right so despite a few issues i had i'm still a big fan of that roth steyer pistol i really like it um, i really like the combination of shootable comfortable sights are usable everything and it's got the really cool World War One connection. Now, one big thing we discovered was if you have a fully internal magazine, which this gun does, it's not removable, only fed from the top, and then I had a failure to extract. So I had a live round in the chamber, which I didn't notice, and the gun locked open because the magazine was empty and I loaded 10 more rounds into it, which gave me a double feed. Normally with a double feed, you'd pull the magazine and cycle the bolt, pull the, the cartridge out. I couldn't do that because I couldn't pull the magazine out the bottom. So I tried pushing the top around down and then letting the bolt go forward over it, but because that magazine was completely full, I didn't have any space to push the round into. It wasn't working. So what I did instead was I just dumped the magazine into my hand, like with the Roth Steyr, the, the follow-up pistol to this one. There is a little button on the side that allows you to empty the magazine out the top. So I just ejected all the rounds into my hand, and then I finished the stage by single loading the pistol, which actually worked, that part worked better than I thought it was. I was able to just drop around into, basically just into the feedway. I didn't have to press it into feed lips and then hit the bolt release and it would chamber and fire well. So um, that was an interesting thing I discovered that I probably wouldn't have found just plinking with the gun because it was only under stress that I missed the, uh, the extraction issue. 
at any rate, um, that was interesting. This gun has a double action only trigger, very much like a Glock actually. And it's got a very heavy trigger pull. So you'll see sometimes when I'm taking a really long time to make a shot. And the reason is I really don't want to miss and I'm just slowly increasing pressure until it finally discharges. And sometimes that took a little while. Uh, by the end of the match, to be honest, my trigger finger is getting sore. And this thing has a really heavy trigger pull that was starting to be an issue for me. Um, despite all that, I really enjoy the pistol. Um, if you, if we have folks out there who have these, I know there are some of you out there. Um, you can load it with stripper without the stripper clip, although it's annoying. Um, I do not know of any good sources for stripper clips. There were reproductions made probably a couple decades ago that are now almost as expensive as the originals, but they are out there. Um, having the ammo available from Fioki is really cool. That's actually out there. So you can get the ammo without paying all that much money um, to be able to actually shoot these. And I'd say if you have one of these from 1907s, as long as it's in good shape, I would not be worried to shoot it. Uh, they're very stout guns, they're durable, and they're really a pleasure to shoot. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this sort of content, please consider checking out my Patreon page. That's what allows me to afford to buy some of these really expensive and rare stripper clips, and of course, a bunch of eight styre ammo and uh, do matches like this. So tune in again to Forgotten Weapons for more interesting World War I pistols. Extreme stripper clip action as they drop to the ground. <laughs>